4, 3, 2, 1, top Allumage et décollage de VV-06. There is a mission up in space called the LISA Pathfinder doing some experiments and it's a slightly strange mission in that what it's got, it's got two little gold cubes out there and the slightly strange thing about it is the, the point of the experiment in some sense isn't the spacecraft around them, it's the two little gold cubes in the middle. It's the beginning of the development of the next generation of gravitational wave detectors. So LIGO has demonstrated that we can detect gravitational waves. But gravitational waves are waves, right? So they have a, a wavelength associated with them or a characteristic frequency. And LIGO is able to measure waves that have got a frequency of about uh, 100 hertz. In, if the theories are correct and they're beginning to look like they're correct, general relativity tells you that we can produce gravitational waves over a whole range of wavelengths and frequencies. In particular, we can produce very large wavelength events. If two galaxies merge together, and we know that happens, the centres of the two galaxies have supermassive black holes in them and we know that they're going to combine and begin to go around and they'll go around much slower than the 30 solar mass black holes that we've seen. The corresponding gravitational waves will have a much lower frequency or a much higher wavelength. So in order to detect them you've actually got to go beyond the Earth, you've actually got to go out into space. And the whole idea of the experiment is to find out whether you really can have these sort of free-floating little cubes and whether you can put an entire spacecraft around them and they still essentially remain as free-floating cubes. So really the cubes are just floating there and the spacecraft has to stay in the right place to keep the, you know, not to nudge the cube in any way. So the boxes are in, in the LISA Pathfinder but not touching the walls of the LISA Pathfinder, they're just following the LISA Pathfinders on a, you know, on a, on a free-fall trajectory and these boxes are as well. And of course that's actually, I mean, you know, physically that's not so hard to do because actually you can have a little cube and then, because it's, you know, you're out there in space so it's actually just going to uh, hang there and you can put a spacecraft around it. But of course, as soon as the cube starts to charge up a little bit, if there's any electric charge on the uh, satellite around it, that's going to start pulling it one way or the other. If there are magnetic fields in there, that's going to start pulling it around. So the question is whether you can really effectively put this whole space probe around a cube and it not disturb the cube in any way. LISA Pathfinder went up, it was launched in December. It's about one and a half million kilometres from Earth between the Earth and the Sun where the gravitational potential, the pull of the Sun on the, on the LISA Pathfinder it exactly balances the pull of the Earth on the gravitational. So the two little cubes in there, they're about 40 centimetres apart and so actually they're doing experiments to see whether they can sort of figure out the distance between them and maintain the station between them at that distance. They're trying to see how well they can measure the differences so that they can understand what's causing the differences. A, they've got to be able to understand what forces are acting on these bodies. There's, there's solar wind, there's various pressures from things like the solar wind and particles. And so they're, they're, they're following the trajectory of these objects and they've discovered that the sensitivity that their experiment can reach is already, I think, f at least five times better than they think they will need for the actual mission. So this is sort of technology proving. They're really just trying to figure out what the limits are of what you can do. Um, and the big goal here is they want to scale the whole thing up. That basically at the moment, these two cubes are about 40 centimetres apart. They want to do an experiment where the two uh, little gold cubes are actually a million kilometres apart. And if you put the two cubes a million kilometres apart, there's some really quite exciting science you can start doing. The complete mission will actually have three spacecraft. This is a thing called uh, ELISA, which I think stands for the Evolved Laser Interferometer Space Antennae or something like that. Anyway, but it's basically an experiment to detect gravitational waves. And they're going to have three of these spacecraft out there. One's going to have two cubes in it, and then you're going to have two other ones which have one cube in each. In the, in the final experiment, what you've got is you've got this constellation of three satellites that are kind of following the Earth around. So the Earth's in orbit around the Sun. You've got this constellation of three satellites. They're all in separate orbits around the Sun, um, going or, or more or less tracking the Earth's orbit, but they're on slightly inclined orbits. And so the net effect of that is as they track around, they kind of rotate around. And so you've got the Earth going around the, the Sun, these satellites following us along, and kind of this rotating constellation of three satellites. And essentially, there are kind of two pairs of cubes in that way. So you've got the kind of two arms of this, uh, this gravitational wave telescope. The other really important thing is, can you measure exactly where the cube is within the spacecraft? So part of the experiment is actually to, to determine the position of the cube within the spacecraft. And that's partly just to make sure the spacecraft stays in the right place. But it's also because of the way this experiment works. The way the experiment, the full size experiment works, is you need to measure the distance between these two little cubes because when one of these gravitational waves goes past, 
space shrinks and expands a little bit, and so the distance between them shifts a little bit. The way you measure the distance between these cubes is you actually measure the distance between the two spacecraft, and then you measure the distance between the spacecraft and the cube, or where within the spacecraft the cube is at each end. And by combining those three bits of information, that basically tells you how too far apart the two cubes actually are. And so part of what they're doing with just this one spacecraft is figuring out quite how accurately they can measure where within the spacecraft the cube is exactly to within you know, a tiny fraction of the size of an atom. So you want something which is fairly non-reactive, so it's not outgassing, so it's not kind of jet propelling itself around and doing anything else that might move it around. You want something which is reflective because actually you're bouncing laser beams off these things in order to, to measure exactly where they are because they're using these techniques called interferometry, which involves bouncing a laser beam backwards and forwards to actually figure out exactly where the cube is. Um, so you just want something which is sort of very passive but also reflects light. So as one of these waves goes past, they, they really are just literally expansions and contractions of space. So, so these cubes will, as space expands and contracts between them, get a little further apart and a little closer together. And depending on what the astrophysical source is which is producing the gravitational waves, uh, as we've seen with the LIGO experiment, you will get these very characteristic signatures and you can actually use that to infer a lot about what it is that's produced the gravitational wave in the first place. You seem to get so excited about spaceships and space travel <laughs> things. Do you ever think you chose the wrong job? <laughs> if, if, if you gave me an engineering job on a spaceship, then that thing wouldn't fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll merge into a bigger black hole, right? And so they merge into this bigger black hole, which actually is estimated to be about, I think, 62 solar mass black hole. And this, the remnant energy, there's still energy left,